says her speech as he opens the door. She rolls over, pretends to sleep as he looks her over. She lies, says she's in love with him, can't find a better man. She dreams in color, she dreams in red, can't find a better man. Can't find a better man. Find a better man. Oh. Talking to herself, there's no one else who needs to know she tells herself. Justin here today we are checking out Better Man by Pearl Jam from the Vitology album what a classic tune this is I must have played this a couple of thousand times in pubs back in Australia when it came out and uh, I've gone over it a little bit more carefully than I had then because it appears that I had a few bits of it a little bit wrong uh, I'm going to show you pretty much exactly what's on the record a lot of it is repeated sections though so I'm going to mainly go through the sections and then rely on you to go through and put the pieces together in the right order you should definitely be listening to and playing along with the original recording as well making sure you're sucking in the full amount of energy i don't think i need to spend too long on the very little intro bit the first 20 seconds it's just three notes really four notes on guitar uh, we're starting off with the first finger in the fifth fret of the third string the note c then it drops back one fret to the fourth fret and then down two frets to the second fret there's a lot of feedback and some guitar effects going on here and it's mostly the kind of the atmosphere it creates more than the notes but in case any of you want to do it live or work out your own interpretations of it it does that three times it's one two three four one two three four here's the third time three four one two three four the last time it just goes back down to the first fret there and then it stops and the main riff comes in so let's have a look at that so what's going on here this is a D with an F sharp bass so there would be a regular old D chord we take that F sharp note move it onto the thicker string they're both F sharp notes pretty sure that Eddie Vedder is playing it this with this finger and there's I would generally use that finger I find it a bit more comfortable but I'm gonna do it Eddie style for today so first finger second fret on the thicker string that finger will mute the fifth string as well probably be difficult not to mute that one we've got an open D string then we've got second finger second fret of the third string little finger third fret on the second string you could choose to use your third finger there but little finger definitely feels easiest for this particular group so play the bass note with the thumb first and second fingers pluck second and third strings little finger comes off plays the open b string open second string and then first finger plays the third string and then we've got this little bass note the open first finger lifts off and goes back down on again for that root note the rhythm also very important one two and three and four and 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 one okay 
Okay, so a little rush at the end. This kind of riff, I think it's a good idea to spend a little bit of time just getting that first part right, get the rhythm of it right, get the finger picking feeling comfortable before you go on to learn the whole song. But this riff is kind of transported around a bit. Now we're going to move it up to frets. So we do that with a little slide. So here's the first riff. It's played twice. And then we're going to do, instead of the open and then the first finger, we go and then slide it up two frets. One, two, three. Exactly the same pattern now, just up two frets. So first finger is in the fourth fret. And now there's this little bit. So little fingers lifted off. We're going to play second string, thinner string, second string, thinner string. Then little finger goes back down and we play second string, third string, second string. And then it's going to slide down. Okay. It does sound a little bit weird because we end up playing this open string and then the same note here with a little finger in the fifth fret of the second string. One and two and three and four and and then the slide back. One and two and three and four and. Okay, so off, little finger off. And two and three, little finger on and four and slide back down again. Those first two chords. That intro piece is played twice through for the very intro. It's a little bit looser when the vocal comes in and it's missing the little fast picking -y part, but otherwise it's pretty much the same. So we have the... We turn, watching the clock, it's four o'clock, it's got to stop, tell him, take no more, she practices her speech as she opens the door. So we've moved the chord up one fret now. This is an F with an A bass. And we're actually going to be playing the F, moving it up two frets more to the G with a B bass, still with the open E string rings out occasionally, F again, and then to the G with a B bass. The exact strings that are picked here varies through the song. So I'm going to show you a kind of a generalized version here, uh, which I think works. And it's good, I think, to have a, a set version to learn to start off with and then through listening to the record a few times you should hopefully pick up any more intricacies that you want to absorb into your own version of it. I'd recommend that you start by playing all three strings, then just the chord, the bass note and then thinner string, second string, third string and then it slides up. That will be the pattern. One, two and three and four and the bass note's very quiet. I'm not even sure it's played every time but one, two and three and Now when we get into the slide, we're missing that pluck on the beat. One, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and slide, and... It can be a little bit loose there. Now we're into the chorus. Now, the very first time, especially live, you can see that Eddie's just strumming it with his fingers. And it sounds good like that. When it gets a little bit more active, you'll also hear that there's a big acoustic guitar part. The electric guitar is strummed as well. Live, you see Eddie Vedder usually keeps a pick tucked into the bottom of his pick guard there, grabs it out and starts strumming a little bit more powerfully. To start off with, we're just going to be using our first finger to strum with, almost like we're holding a pick, but we are, in fact, just going to be using the fingers. Now, the chords, we have D. A. Now I'm just using an A mini bar here, so I'm not playing the thinner string. Okay, so the highest note we hear is the second string. And then we're going to use G. I usually don't use my first finger. It seems that Eddie often does, but so it's up to you. But it's the four fingered one. We want the third and fourth fingers on the thinnest two strings. And then it's going to a D. 
Now there's lots of different chord variations that happen here. You can do a... This doesn't happen the first time. The very first time through, it's very, very simple. You get that nice ham and organ thing going on in the background. She loves and says she's in love with him. Can't find a better man. There's this really nice... Where you get the G and it's moving to the D slightly earlier on the and after four and then as well this nice little sus movement where you lift off the second finger It does that little part three times through, but the next time round it goes to an A sus chord, but it doesn't go to the A where you would expect in an open position. It goes here. So this is the top part of an E shaped bar chord. Third finger, seventh fret of the fourth string, second finger, sixth fret of the third string, first finger playing the thinnest two strings. And then little finger is going to go down on the seventh fret here on the third string gives us an A sus. D. And then again, D sus4, little finger going down. A. Then I'm pretty sure it's going to like folk G. Now, not, not the regular rock G here. We want to hear that B string on that grip. It really sort of seems to help with the harmony. So, that little sequence there, so D, and A, G, D, A, G, sus if you want, then to A, sus4, to D. Now, the strumming, again, the key thing here is keeping the hand moving. If you keep the hand moving, you're going to be okay. The, the sus chords often come on the up strums, okay, which is nice because the, the, it seems to accentuate those notes a little bit better. So, one, two, and three, and four. into my sus chords there and then back into the riff again whether you add the a sus is up to you there's a lot of layers in pearl jam stuff because you've got three great guitar players and they mix their parts really really well so for me here having the is kind of an amalgamation of the different parts. Uh, there's definitely a very strong strummy acoustic part that happens in that song and the other electric parts kind of do a little bit more weaving together. But what I'm talking about here is an amalgamation of them. So you could choose to not do that and it would sound fine. If you're playing in a band, you need to sit down and give the track a little bit more of a listen and define who's going to be playing what parts. I mentioned already that Eddie changes to using a pick. So all of that first section, the, the first verse, the first chorus, all still play with the fingers. Then it's... And then you're picking a pickup and you're strumming it and giving it a good bit of welly as well. You want to try and find a sound that is a clean sound when you're playing softly with the fingers and then when you've got the... When the pick comes out, it gets a little bit crunchier. Again, key thing with the strumming is keeping the hand moving, the general pattern. Down, up, up, down, 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 down. Ah, 
that's such a great tune so the thing is when you get the pick things get a little bit more energetic you need to be a little bit more careful with the muting because really you want the thicker string played muted fifth string open d string obviously the next two strings are played but they're fretted i tend to mute the thinner string i find it gets a bit she sounds pretty cool now i always thought it felt thought it got a little bit in the way but actually it sounds pretty cool as well so there's one other section that you probably miss out on which is the little splangs on the g chord so there's one section it's just a g I think there's a, a sus going on here as well, G sus, the most holy of chords. Uh, first finger going down, it's just a G, regular folk G with the third and fourth fingers. And then using your first finger in the first fret of the second string. It's just a nice embellishment. We've got lots of sus chords in Pearl Jam stuff, particularly this song. We've got a lot of use of the D sus 2 and the D sus 4 and the A sus 4 and now the G sus 4 as well. The A sus 4 of course we've got two different grips of it so it's a bit of a sus chord fest this song beautiful tune of course uh, i find it a particularly tricky one to sing register wise but uh and it's a hard one to put a capo on for because it's reliant on the open string so much but i'm sure if you want to have a go at this song you'll find your own approach to singing it i really hope you enjoy playing this tune there's plenty more pearl jam coming up i just finished transcribing even flow and jeremy and there's a couple of others in the works as well but what other pearl jam songs would you like me to do lessons on let me know in the comments below if you're over on youtube i really appreciate you hitting that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification button as well the little bell if you want to get notified when these new pearl jam lessons come off the rack I'll see you for plenty more lessons and songs very soon. You all take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.